Hey y'all, Coach in the Fight here, talking about the biblical events of the second sacred month. Now, I've been looking at this chart here, and you can find a link to the video where I got this chart. But Ken has been looking at these solar eclipses over the course of about 14 years, from about 2014 to 2029 or 2030 or something like that. And it seems like they all are pointing to the second month, 5-16-2022. That's actually second Passover in the year 2022. Now, what occurs on May 16th of the year 2022 is a lunar eclipse, one of two lunar eclipses in the year 2022. So what I decided to do was to look at all of the events of the second month. Now, if you've been around our channel for any time, you've probably seen this wall calendar here before and notice these markings going around it there in the middle. What those are, are the dates from the Bible on this calendar so that we can keep track of these dates. I've been doing this since the 90s, um, thinking that these dates will have some significance and maybe they do. So what I'm going to do is go through all of the scriptures that I can find. This is my library here. Um, I'm actually going to look digitally and we're going to go through and see what all we can find in the second month. What events have taken place in the scripture um, through the second month? So we're going to look through all of these books and pull every verse out that we can find related to the second month. Now, the first one that we're going to look at is the book of Adam. Yeah, I said we're going to look at everything. But you see here in the first chapter of the book of Adam is when Abel was born. Abel was known as the first priest. But then when you look down in chapter two, you see that Eve actually had a dream about Abel's death. And I found it interesting that both of those events happened in the second month. But let's go on because it's going to get even more interesting. Now, in the book of Josephus, we see that the second temple was actually constructed in the second month as well. At least that's when the foundations were laid. But we're going to see that again here shortly. And it was also in the second month that we see that they start numbering the Israelites or numbering the heads of the males of the congregation. Now, you see, it was on the first day of the second month that Moses got the commandment to number the heads of all of the males of the children of Israel, 20 years old and upward. And by the end of this video, I think you're going to see that there's a kind of a pattern going on here. This is confirmed over in the book of Numbers in chapter one. It says again, it was the first day of the second month. But you see here that it says that that's the time that they declared their pedigrees. Now, with all this going on, this gets really interesting when you think that this could be the year that the Levites of today could declare their pedigrees. This was all part of the numbering of the entire congregation. We see here in verses one through three that they were in the wilderness of Sinai on the first day of the second month when they got this commandment to sum all of the congregation of the children of Israel. But it was also in the first day of the second month that Joshua got the commandment to take Jericho. Now I'm missing a slide here. I'm going to have to put it up on the screen, but it was in the second month that the walls of Jericho fell as well. Now it was also in the second month that Zerubbabel started the second temple. Like we see here in Ezra chapter three. Now, when you come to first Ezra chapter five, you see that it was actually on the first day of the second month that they actually started laying the foundations for that temple. But let's back up a little bit. I'm taking these by the day and we'll see that Solomon began the first temple construction in the second month as well. We see one reference to that in the book of Josephus chapter three. For a biblical reference, we come to 1 Kings in chapter 6. It was the second month when he began to build the house of the Lord. And in 2 Chronicles chapter 3, we see that it was actually on the second day of the second month that he started the construction. So you had the second day of the second month for the construction of the first temple and the first day of the second month for the construction of the second temple. And then we don't see another mention of the second month until you get to the 14th day of the second month when they start talking about second Passover. 
We first hear about that in Numbers chapter 9, where they were given the instruction that anybody who missed first Passover could keep second Passover a month later. Well, you see in 2 Chronicles chapter 30, that Hezekiah actually took advantage of that. He actually united both Israel and Judah for the first time, reunited those guys for the Feast of Second Passover. So like chapter 30 of 2 Chronicles said, it was in the 14th day of the second month. Now in 2 Chronicles chapter 30, you see one of the main reasons why they wasn't prepared to do Passover in the first month was because the Levites weren't ready. And you have to remember that the Levites were to get ready in the first month, uh, the first day of the first month. So because they wasn't prepared, they had to take advantage of second Passover. And that would have been the 14th day of the second month. But then when we look at the events of the 15th day of the second month, you see that that was the time when Moses led the people from Elam to the wilderness of sin. And you see there in verse 48, this was the first time that they actually started eating manna. This would have been around the 15th day of the second month. So manna would be considered unleavened bread because that would have occurred during the first day or the high holy day of unleavened bread. Now this is confirmed over in Exodus chapter 16. You see again that the congregation of the children of Israel are journeying from Elam to the wilderness, the wilderness of sin. This was the second month after departing the land of Egypt. And you see down in verse 3, it didn't take them long to start missing Egypt. But anyway, looking at the events of the 17th day of that same month, you see that that was the time when the serpent tempts Eve. Yep. That was the day that she actually had the meeting with the serpent and decided to eat of the fruit of the tree in the midst of the garden, which the father had told them not to eat. That whole conversation went down on the 17th day of the second month. We see that in the book of Jubilees in chapter 3. But there was another event that happened on the 17th day of the second month, and that's when it appears that the rain started. It says that the fountains of the deep were broken up, in verse 11 and then in verse 12 it says it rained for 40 days and 40 nights so the floods of noah actually started in the second month as well now a few days later on the 20th of the second month you see that the children of israel left the wilderness of sin and traveled to Paran. by that time they were following the cloud during the day and the fire at night but then when we come to the book of Joseph and Aseneth, we see that it was the first year of the seven years of plenty over there in Egypt that Pharaoh sent Joseph out to start collecting the food for the famine that was to come. Well, that was in the first year of plenty. Well, about nine years later, we see that Jacob actually got to meet Joseph's wife, Athenis. And then it was on the 21st day of the second month that Jacob had to move his whole family into Egypt. Now, looking back at the flood on the 27th day of the second month was when the flood waters had dried off the earth. You see, it was on the first day of the first month that Noah had removed the covering off the ark as the ground was beginning to be dried. Well, it was on the 27th day of the second month when the earth was completely dried. So the rain started in the second month and the earth was dried a year later in the second month. We see that over in the book of Jasher as well. And then the last thing that I could find going on in the second month is how a guy named Alchemist gave a command to actually tear down the inner court of the temple. Well, you see that was a bad idea because he was paralyzed and he died just a short time later. But anyway, that's all I could find out of the second month, but I believe that's enough to paint a picture of how important this second month is as far as our father's timeline is concerned. Now, I know I had to rush through all of this. I hope you'll go back and you'll read these slides. And if you decide to, help me understand the pattern that you come up with in the comment section. Could the second month be the beginning of the third temple? Well. I'm going to be one of those Levites getting prepared in the first month so I can be a part of it if that be the case. 
Now, make sure you have that bell notification button pushed, guys, if you want to see these videos as they come out. We'll be putting out more information on these as we get more information and more understanding. So, if you would, let me know what you think down in the comments section.